Now I request E.S. Sharma ji to go ahead, sir. I, we have uh, heard a lot of very useful, we have got a lot of useful information. I feel really enlightened. It is very useful to me as a citizen. Now, uh, the subject is what the government should do. I always say the government should do what the people want. So I will give you the input from the people's point of view. So the first one from a patient's point of view, second one from a citizen's point of view. Now, patient's point of view, see, I am actually 80 years old. I'm highly vulnerable to this corona. I have taken both the doses of the vaccine, but I got a patient who is about 25 years old, a young boy, and he developed some body pains and all that, and I got him tested. It is a rapid antigen test, and he tested positive. So he has been home quarantined, and he has been taking treatment from a doctor on telephone. So it was all right for some time. Then the doctor said, you monitor his temperature. So I got him a thermometer. He also said, you monitor his oxygen level. I got him an oximeter. But unfortunately, our education system is such that boy cannot read a thermometer or can use it. He cannot use an oximeter. So on telephone, we told him how to use them. It is very difficult. And about uh, seven, eight days, suddenly his oxygen level seemed to have gone down. So I got worried. So what should I do? So I telephoned emergency. Emergency said, look, uh, you contact so-and-so in Vizac. This is a, a centralized emergency in uh, Andhra Pradesh. So I contacted the local uh, uh, people. They were very good, very responsive. And finally, they said, we'll send a van and take him to the hospital, a government hospital, very well-known hospital in Vishakhapatnam. So the van was about to come. Then they said, uh, sir, that boy has got uh, a written a documentary proof that he is uh, tested positive. I said, no, the lab people came to my house, tested him, and uh, they did the rapid antigen test, and they showed him the test, and there is nothing, no SMS, no written thing. No, 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 sir, he needs an RT-PCR test positive. Now, I checked up RT-PCR test in Vishakhapatnam. There is a long queue. You have to go at about 4 o'clock in the morning. You have to stand there. A man who is you know, has his lungs congested and his oxygen levels suspected to be low, you can't expect him to stand in a queue. So what do I do? Now, I tried to get him an oxygen cylinder from the market. So I telephoned all the private companies. Oxygen is in shortage. It is not available. Somebody said, sir, after two days, you telephone me. I'll let you know whether the stock is there or not. So there is a serious shortage. Now, this is the kind of position today where ambulances are not there. Hospital beds are not there. Oxygen is not there. You telephone any medical shop, drugs are not there. Leave alone rem remdesivir, even ordinary drugs. Whatever Dr. Manjunath said, very often, you know, they are not easily available. So in this situation, how does a patient really deal with this? I mean, see, what the government should do and all is very easy to say. So this, here I, what I feel is, the Bombay Municipal Corporation, there is one Iqbal Chahal, who is a commissioner. He has introduced a model which I thought was very, very effective and every other government should adopt that. What he has done is, the moment there is a call from a patient, the Bombay Municipal Corporation takes over the patient. They send a vehicle, they get him tested, they decide whether he should continue in home quarantine or whether he should go to a corona center or whether he should go to a hospital where there is oxygen and ICU facility. Everything they do. And they've got a dashboard. They know every private hospital, every government hospital, where beds are there. They have complete real-time data. And they, it's their responsibility to move the patient wherever they, he has to go. And then they take over the treatment. Now, the results are very, very impressive. You see, Bombay is a huge city. And there is a lot of migrant labor. There's a lot of moving traffic. But still, Bombay Municipal Corporation, the number of positive cases has come down. The mortality rate has come down below 0.5%. In a, in a record time. So I personally feel that uh, this is extremely important. One important thing from a patient's point of view, you know, when I failed with all the government hospitals because they want a test certificate, I checked up with uh, private hospitals. Now, private hospitals want these people to deposit three lakhs for which they do not issue a receipt. They, they issue a receipt only for 50,000. Now, this is the kind of fleecing, you know, fleecing patients, the private That's hospitals. Not. So, this is, 
So I was thinking that this Bombay Municipal Corporation kind of thing, where reach out to the patient, take over, the government should take out the take over the responsibility, and see that he is treated properly, given all the facilities. I think it's extremely important. Now, citizens' point of view. Now, I, as a senior citizen, I was supposed to get my second dose, and I, it's impossible. You know, I tried to contact everybody. And uh, uh, information was not really readily available. I used Aarogya Setu application. It wouldn't work. Covid uh, website. The information was wrong. I scheduled appointments. They were cancelled. And it's impossible to do anything at all. So finally, they said, "Look, there is a municipal public health center. You go there, and you take your uh, vaccine, second dose of vaccination." So my wife and I both are senior citizens. So we thought we'll be we'll be somewhat careful. 8:30 the center will open so we went at 7:30 and in front of me there were 100 people waiting there all old people very aged disabled with walkers and what not and uh, i waited for 4 hours in the in the queue ultimately i got my second dose i, I feel very confident now now from the citizens point of view today i was calculating india's population is about 1300 million out of whom with all this hoo ha and all this great tikka utsav and all that we could vaccinate only 100 million even less than 100 million so we have got another 1200 million people to be vaccinated imagine about 80% of them to be vaccinated it comes to about 960 or whatever it is now this 960 people we have to give them 960 million people we have to give them vaccines i calculated if they have to be vac vaccinated in 3 months you have to have vaccination rate of 11 million per day Four months, eight million per day. Five months, six point four. Six months, five point three million per day. What is the capacity of India vaccine manufacture? Four million per day. If Serum Institute ramps up its capacity full to full capacity, government has given them hand. And even the Serum Institute managing the uh, chairman managing director said, up to June, July, we will not be able to ramp up. So it looks as though that uh, we will. Vaccinate everybody within six months in India seems to be like a dream. You have to import vaccines, and importing vaccines is not easy because every other country is competing with you for vaccines in the world. After all, the world's vaccination capacity, uh, vaccine ma manufacturing capacity is limited. So here the question comes: You are going to, you are not going to find vaccines so easily. There is a shortage, and how do we tackle that? Whenever there is a shortage, you must prioritize. The prioritization is very clear. 65 plus senior citizens, comorbidity people, then 45 plus people, pregnant women, children, 18 plus. So this is the priority. I was surprised when the prime minister announced 18 plus. We're opening on first of May. How do you do that? The moment you do that, the vulnerable sections are going to lose out on vaccine. It's a very very serious matter. I don't know how they don't make any calculations. So in my view, it's extremely important that we prioritize. and then we realize we calculate the exact shortage of vaccine and we prioritize according to that we have a time schedule according to the availability indigenous availability what we can import we should quickly place or place orders and all vaccines must be given free for all people below poverty line and uh, they should be given masks free is extremely important i i personally believe more than vaccine as dr manjunath said and also dr rakesh bisha said it is the physical distancing social connectivity and uh, a proper mask mask you know double mask probably it is, is absolutely necessary and in this country there is no time for electioneering large election campaigning in bengal and all that they are all super spreaders kumbh mela was a super spreader farm uh, farmers agitation the government doesn't settle that becomes a super spreader in every state i find religious congregations and uh, even uh, some of the powerful influential industrial units they want environment clearance so they want a public hearing so in spite of all this ministry of home affairs guidelines and all our uh, india pollution control boards in karnataka tamil nadu andhra everywhere they are holding public meetings i said look you can't have public hearings when corona is uh, spreading andhra pradesh uh, today the number of cases added every day is almost about 20000 so many days you know crematoriums are full so this is the kind of thing where so we should prioritize and vaccinate our people according to the prayer now the most important thing is what are the long term measures you know i was looking at uh, the reports of the ministry of health government of india the 2015 report on primary rural health centers and also the urban health centers the infrastructure that is 
rural health, district hospitals, super specialty wards, if you take the whole uh, health infrastructure, the shortfall is about 30 to 40 percent. So the national health policy of the of government of India in 2017 said, today we are spending only 1 percent of the GDP on health sector. You have to increase it to about 2.5 to 3 percent. It's very clearly written there. Now from 2017, Till 2020, that is before the first, first wave of corona, corona, we could have built up this infrastructure. In my view, governments exist only for two sectors, health and education. And these are the most important investments in public sector. So the government ought to have invested. They did not do it. So corona came and exposed. It exposed our weakness. To, you know, the ambulance is shot. Hospital beds are shot. Oxygen and drug, you know, your cremation grounds, you know, Every city must have uh, electric crematoriums. In uh, Vishakhapatnam, there is one which does not work. For the last several uh, years, I've been asking them, why don't you set up these crematoriums? They are hygienic. They have not done that. So, in a way, long-term investment is, you know, I was surprised, 2020, the first wave, uh, when the relief came, when it started abating, I thought that the government would wake up and increase uh, the, the allocation, budgetary allocation for health sector. I looked at the figures, I was surprised. No increase at all. They were absolutely non-challenged. Government was non-challenged. They were talking, uh, there are a lot of words, but no deed. And the health sector budget remained stagnant. And I remember uh, CCMB, Prakash Mishra's Institute, a world-class institution. I remember Pushpa Bhargava and all that were in Hyderabad. I am from Hyderabad. I used to be in touch with them. It's a remarkable institute. There are many laboratories in India, CSAR labs and all that. They are outstanding, world-class. But government has to support them. And I was surprised when the new mutants came, I told, I'm told that genome sequencing work, the government ought to have funded all these institutions in a very big way and gone all out. But there was a setback because there was a relief. Everybody thought that uh, first wave is over and we have conquered, we have conquered uh, you know, this uh, virus. And uh, that is a self-congratulation. So in the process, what happened was there was a setback and we, we ought to have gone all out for testing, new testing methods, scientific research. See, after all the vaccine development in India for the last 20 years, it came because of India's investment in science and technology. And we must remember that. Today, we have got, we have, we have, we have got indigenous capacity to produce vaccines because of that investment we made in science and technology. So this particular thing, you know, this third wave, fourth wave is all right. There are new pandemics coming. Many new pandemics may come. So we should be prepared for that. So our science, technology, everything must be strengthened. At least there's a wake-up call. We should do that. So I personally feel the long-term measures are equally important. So I hope that the government, I have written the letters to the prime minister, the finance minister, the health minister. They, they don't reply much, but then I hope they uh, take into account some of these sessions. And I've given them a plan of action. Uh, so I think uh, the more important thing is to have a, a cogent action plan, a strategy. And we should be able to meet. And you know, I personally feel this politicization, as some party versus some party, state versus center, all this in a pandemic situation, center states, all political parties, they must be committed. Stop bickering. Because the country wants to conquer these pandemics. We don't want this great uh, you know, political bickering and all that. So I think we must have a national committee. I call it a national committee. Center, states, and all political parties should be there. And they should oversee vaccine distribution, vaccine prioritization. How the, the whole strategy is implemented, I think that's extremely important. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir.